Everybody knows that the jump between GCSE and A-level, especially in maths, can be really difficult. But with this short video, I will try my very best to make sure you go into year 12 feeling as confident as you possibly can. Now, before anything, do not spend your summer trying to revise and stress about next year. Your summer is to have a break from all these exams because you've just done your GCSEs and at least for the month of July, just enjoy yourself and do other things. I would probably recommend being a bit more proactive towards preparing for next year around August time as the summer comes to an end. Now, my first point to prepare as well as you possibly can for A-level maths, you need to understand algebra as well as you possibly can. Because I don't know if you've seen any A-level maths papers. If you just have a look at one now, I can put some links in the description. There is algebra everywhere. I think there is more letters than there is numbers in the actual content. Now, algebra is a very broad topic. So what exactly do I mean by just understand algebra? Now, this could be solving any type of equation that is thrown at you, whether it's a quadratic equation, algebraic fractions, normal linear equations, simultaneous equations, completing the square, or even the quadratic formula. At A-level, there are many other equations that you will be taught, such as trigonometric equations using sin, cos, tan, and even some other type of functions in year 13. So by understanding the basic ones now that you should know at GCSE will help you a lot, trust me. If you're ever unsure of exactly what you should know, then you can always look up the specification for your exam board, and it's fairly easy to find online. Point number two, don't be afraid to work ahead of the lessons that you're having in school or college. Now, one thing I used to do is in the textbook, if there was a topic that caught my eye or I had no idea what it was, I would probably go on like YouTube or look on other websites online and just try and understand a little bit about it before we got to it in the lessons. And this doesn't have to be a load of work and like hours and hours of questions and stuff like that. Simply a five minute intro video, which I'm aiming to make in the next few weeks, can help you massively just to understand the basics of it. So that when you do come to doing it in lessons, while everyone else is confused over the basics, you understand them before the teachers even explained it. So I highly, highly recommend this because there are countless videos and countless explanations out there that you just need to click on to get this information. Now, next is revision methods. After doing your GCSEs, it is probably safe to say you found a revision method that works best for you. If this isn't the case, I would probably start exploring one throughout the summer just so that you can be on top of things going into year 12. Now, the biggest change between GCSE and A-level is you are going to have free periods. You're going to have certain hours that are dedicated to your own independent time. Now, you can just sit and socialise and chat with friends, or you can spend some of those hours working and making revision notes straight away. I highly recommend making revision notes as soon as possible, because if you can do that consistently throughout the whole year, that's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of stress when the exams come around. Now, my next point is fairly general to all the A-level options you could choose. But on the specification or through the textbooks, just make a brief summarised list of all the topics that you should be able to know by the end of the year. Now, by doing this, you can start ticking off which ones you feel really comfortable with, which ones you're a bit 50-50 on, or ones that you really do not understand at all. And again, just like I said earlier, by finding these little YouTube videos or other online resources, you can create this list and start making your checklist before the year even begins. So for example, at A-level maths, probably one of the hardest topics is integration, something you've never even come close to doing at GCSE. But as soon as you start doing it in A-level, it's going to be really difficult at first because that's one of the things that you just need to practice loads of. If you just maybe start looking up some YouTube videos on that now, then by the time you come to do that at maybe the end of year 12, you will be much more confident than 99% of your classmates when the teacher comes around to teaching it properly. As I've mentioned before, especially with A-level maths, practice makes perfect. Now, if you're very, very gifted at maths and you're getting level nines at GCSE and so on, there will be certain topics that you don't really need to practice much, but I can guarantee you there will be especially one or two that you will struggle with and you will need to practice. All this has to be is just a couple example questions from the textbooks or just some brief revision notes. Practice is the main thing that's going to get you better. And don't shy away from past papers, no matter how far through the year you are. Whether you're just starting in September or you're a month away from your exams in May, past papers will be useful all year round. Because even if you haven't seen the content, you can expect what kind of questions are going to come up when you do see that content in lessons. So naturally, in the back of your mind, the teacher will be teaching it to you and you're going to be like, oh yeah, I remember seeing this before. 
I know how they're going to ask me this. And you can base your learning off of exactly what you've seen in the papers, because at the end of the day, if you can answer the questions in the papers, you're going to do well in A-level maths. Now, something a bit more just about A-level maths in general, there are three components. You've got pure maths, you've got mechanics, and unfortunately, you have stats. Stats is collectively an unpopular thing in maths. Personally, I'm not a big fan of stats. Let me know down below whether you do like it or which one you prefer out of stats or mechanics. But the main thing that I see is a lot of students will prioritise the pure, rightfully so because it is the majority of the marks, but they will neglect mechanics and stats and then they will be panicking towards the end of the year. Make sure you work evenly throughout pure mechanics and stats as you go through the year. Make lots of revision notes, do all the practice papers, all the exam questions, because at the end of the day, pure makes up the majority of the marks, but stats and mechanics are still required if you're looking to get those high grades at the end of the year. Now, throughout the rest of the summer, my aim is to make summary videos on everything that you're going to be learning in year 12. Now, hopefully, if you're watching this around late July or August time, or even in September, hopefully by this point, I have made a lot of summary videos on all the topics that you will be learning in the next year. So I would appreciate it massively, and I'm sure it will benefit you if you can go and watch these. Take all the points I've said today into consideration. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope this video has helped. Good luck for next year.